my name is shahid jameel uh, i am a virologist by training i am currently director uh, in the school of biosciences at ashoka university before this uh, i was uh, heading the welcome dbt india alliance which is a biomedical research funding body and before that i worked for 25 years as group leader of virology at the international center for genetic engineering and biotechnology in new delhi well the first question that comes to my mind is spanish flu 1918 and covid 2020 100 years apart besides that how are they different spanish flu infected one of every three persons living at that time 500 million people between march 1918 and march 1920 covid has infected about 100 million people by now about 1.3% of the world's population now the difference is that spanish flu happened at a time when virus was simply a concept no one knew what a virus looked like no one had seen one and that's because the electron microscope was discovered only in 1931 the first virus was seen around the mid 1930s we did not know the cause of spanish flu till the 1970s covid virus on the other hand was sequenced within one week of notification of the outbreak in wuhan china so what's different the difference is science difference is how science has come along the developments in science and technology over the past 100 years and let no one forget that we are fighting this pandemic today because of science so the next question is when is the next pandemic hitting us all of 20th century we had three pandemics all were airborne viruses the 1918 spanish flu the 1915 asian flu and the 1968 hong kong flu just look at the first 20 years of the 21st century we already have two pandemics that is swine flu in 2009 and covid which is ongoing but that's not enough we had just we had three near misses we had sars in 2003 we had bird flu in 2005 and ebola in 2014 to 2016 doesn't it tell you that the frequency of infectious disease is increasing that makes me believe that the next one is around the corner just when i don't know how do we mitigate it in one word don't mess with environment now here is a scary thought what if ebola becomes airborne you know as i said earlier mortality in covid-19 stands at at around 2% compare that to ebola in 2014 to 16 it had a 40% 40% mortality so what happens if a virus like ebola becomes airborne it can cause devastation how can it happen if ebola starts shedding from our mucosal surfaces from our nose from our throat but another thing to ponder is if ebola really becomes airborne will it remain a 40% fatal virus or will it become a 2% fatal virus we don't know the answer to that remember that killing the host is not in the interest of any virus a virus reaches a dead end if it kills the host why do i say that look at hiv hiv is a very very successful virus the pandemic started in 1981 it continues till date but on an average people die 5 to 10 years after getting infected during this period they are largely asymptomatic and they are shedding the virus they are transmitting the virus now that's a successful virus ebola not a successful virus it kills pretty much everyone it uh, uh, it infects well viruses are fascinating but viruses are also deadly as you can see any pathogen 
is interesting pathogens are scary how do we make sure that pandemics don't happen well one is let us look at our model of development over again let us make sure we don't mess with our environment because most of these things come directly from disturbing the environment 